Hello and welcome everyone to Gaming Retro and uh, I realized that it's been a while since I talked about my Tower of Doom project here so I thought uh, just before Christmas here before things get really crazy go ahead and share with you uh, where I am at on that and I think what I'll do is uh, come back show you the uh, actual components that I'm planning on putting in here but first of all uh, actually share with you the rabbit hole uh, that I've gone down and trying to figure out what exactly uh, is the most powerful AT style system because if you remember that was the primary goal of this whole project was okay I've got this AT style case you know let's pretend like it's 1999 uh, what would be the most powerful uh, computer that you could actually put into an AT style case without doing any modifications really to it uh, at all First of all, a uh, huge shout out to uh, CPU World for providing uh, all this great information all packed into their website here. And quite honestly, I would be uh, rather lost with without this information. All right, so I knew that I'd be doing a Pentium 3. The reason for that is, you know, I already had a my Pentium uh, 3 600 megahertz slot one processor there. Um, you know, in a, an AT style uh, motherboard, and uh, I knew that you know I could only go up from there. Except uh, I also know that uh, the AT style motherboard, uh, which was replaced by the ATX style motherboard, which by the way, um, here's the real quick breakdown. If you you know you need a little bit of a refresher here, you don't see AT style motherboards anymore. They were basically extinct by. I think about 2000 is when maybe the very last of them were manufactured um, and they've since disappeared essentially into the rather niche uh, vintage computer market. So um, that that would mean that basically um, a Pentium 4 would not work. And of course, you know, barring a Pentium 4 and, and newer, the most powerful processor family would be the Pentium 3 and some of the faster um, Celeron processors of that generation. So I went on CPU World again and started looking at the various options for uh, Pentium 3 processors because uh, honestly this wasn't really an area that I knew a ton about. I knew there was slot one. I knew there was a Comper mine. Um, I had totally forgotten actually that there was this other option which is the uh, the, the Tula 10 processor which goes from I think about a gigahertz here to uh, up to 1.4 uh, gigahertz and was actually the last and and most powerful of the Pentium 3 processors. So that seemed like a logical place to start my, my quest here for the fastest uh, AT style system. I however started looking through uh, eBay and uh, yeah I searched and searched and searched for a uh, Tula 10 processor on an AT style motherboard and I did some more research online, looked back at eBay, looked online, went back and forth many times and uh, as far as I can tell there is no AT motherboard that will support a Tula 10 processor which is kind of sad. Um, I did consider the uh, possibility of using a socket that's a funny funny name there. Um, so the socket, if you're not familiar with, allows a, uh, well, basically a, a Pentium 3 and a socket 370, which is a regular horizontal socket, um, to go into a slot one uh, motherboard. And, um, and theoretically, uh, a number of these motherboards, these slot one motherboards, should be able to handle you know, at least a copper mine, if not a Tula 10 processor using that socket. But I've been told that this is a complete crapshoot basically in terms of the motherboard actually being able to handle a socket and then of course the processor that is on that socket. So um, there are a few sockets available on eBay. I'm not gonna go, I don't think, and experiment with those just, just yet. I think I would prefer not to use an adapter if possible and, and just use the the, uh, the the correct motherboard. So, so if I do not go with the Tula 10, and it doesn't seem like that's actually a reasonable option, uh, what else is there? Well, basically, you have to go back to the copper mine processors, uh, Pentium 3 socket 370, 
Um, there were socket ones still around um, up until I think about 1999. So the socket 370s and the, the, the slot ones cartridges existed at the same time. So looking more closely at the copper mine family of processors, you can see that those go from uh, 100 to 133 front side bus. Uh, these guys have 256 kilobytes of L2 cache. Even though that was technically half the cache, it was actually more efficient because it was right on the same die as the CPU. So uh, these processors had a noticeable jump in overall processing power and capabilities compared to uh, the Katmai, the earlier Katmai processors. So I started kind of scrolling through here on CPU world again, and you can see this one, the processor already have that 600 megahertz uh, Pentium 3 processor, but uh, keep going down here, you see various slot ones and 370s mixed in. And as we go faster and faster and faster, we end up down here and we get to the one gigahertz uh, Pentium 3 copper mine processor with 133 megahertz bus, uh, which not all motherboards support. Uh, keep that in mind because some motherboards just support uh, 100 megahertz. And of course, the motherboard I have will only support um, 100 mega, megahertz bus uh, chip. So that even with a slocket, um, something like this would, would not work on there. But you know, um, eliminating the Tuolatin uh, processors, basically we're left with the one gigahertz Pentium 3 being theoretically the fastest uh, processor you'll find on an AT style motherboard, at least it's compatible with an AT style motherboard. Now, in terms of actually finding a motherboard which will take the one gigahertz processor, that actually proved to be not terribly difficult. As you can see here, I found actually one that already had a one gigahertz processor on it. And in, in another case, you know, an 800 megahertz Celeron processor, which should actually take a one gigahertz uh, copper mine as well. So there are actually a number of boards just kind of going through eBay that will accept, you know, the one gigahertz copper mine processor without too much of a problem. But the motherboard I have on hand does not support up to a one gigahertz uh, copper mine processor. In fact, it, it maxes out at this, and this is a Pentium 3 uh, 600 megahertz. So it came with a Pentium 2 processor in the slot one. I'm going to take that out and actually replace it with this Pentium 3 600 megahertz. Now, yes, I could go and order a one gigahertz uh, copper mine processor and, uh, you know, push it to what is probably the limit for an AT style system. But, you know, honestly, I started thinking about it and, you know, I realized that 600 megahertz is, is actually already probably overkill for most of the things that I want to use this computer for, which is basically... Uh, late 90s gaming because I've got that, you know, Voodoo 3 card and um, the various other components are, are really going to be well suited for that era of, of gaming. So I decided that to go ahead and go with this motherboard with the 600 megahertz, uh, see how that works. Um, there are other considerations, you know, in choosing this particular motherboard or motherboards in general of this era. And um, with an AT style system, what I wanted was uh, definitely an AGP port, which I have on this motherboard, so that's quite convenient. Um, you know, even if you've got a one gigahertz processor, but you're, you know, using a PCI slot uh, video card, you know, you're gonna be limited uh, severely by that PCI slot. So um, definitely AGP for that time period is the way to go. This particular motherboard also has um, three PCI slots, which is nice for sound cards or whatever else you want to put in there. Um, has a couple ISA slots, right? For older, if I want to put an older uh, sound card or something like that in there, um, it's got room for that. So there's another thing on my list. Uh, another big thing actually was on this uh, AT motherboard, again, is having both sort of the, the older and newer 20 pin style uh, power connector because you need the 20 pin power connector uh, for modern power supply and I figured you know if I went in and actually replaced the 
um, old AT style power supply that's in here at some point that I wanted to be compatible with an ATX style power supply. So that was on my list as well. So I, you know, kind of checked most of the boxes with this motherboard. It's gonna be a little slower than maybe the, the very fastest Pentium that I could possibly put in there. But it was kind of fun to go down that rabbit hole and see what the ultimate uh, fastest uh, computer could possibly be in that AT form factor. Now a couple other things just real quick that I'll add I know I'm going to be adding to this computer is this um, what the seller claimed to be new old stock it just came in a plastic bag but it looks really good um, this uh, five and a quarter inch uh, floppy so that'll be an excellent addition and um, also just picked up a regular old uh, black CD-ROM drive so nothing particularly special about this just a regular CD-ROM drive uh, I did, uh, I, I believe I mentioned that I was going to try to do kind of a white um, theme, color theme with the various optical drives and so forth in the front here, but I realized that it would be much, much easier uh, just to do everything black and have an all black theme with the system. So that's what I ended up going for and that's what I'll do. One other thing, though the, um, the actual turbo button is not going to work on this computer, I want to actually be able to display that frequency of the the processor at 600 megahertz or whatever you know turned out to be up to one gigahertz so i actually had to track down a megahertz display that would show up to 999 megahertz um, there are a number of three digit displays out there but most of them on the left digit uh it only goes up to one i mean it only displays one and that's it so um this one's kind of neat and a bit rare and that has uh, all three digits and it's allowed to go up to nine on each one of those digits. So that's kind of neat as well. All right guys, that's about it. And uh, I'll go ahead and update you further. Once I kind of get all this stuff together, I think I'm just gonna put it together and then um, try to get a, a proper monitor for it, proper speakers, probably on black, and then make a video showing how that all turned out. So I think next time you see the Tower of Doom, um, it'll actually be in action. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, whatever it is that you end up doing. And uh, if I don't come up with another video before the new year, I hope you all have a wonderful New Year's as well. And I'll see you in 2020.